turn the wires. Okay. Hello, everybody. How you doing? I'm well. <laughs> My name is Diana Cordova, and I am the director of multicultural affairs here at Eastern. And I mean, I just have the tremendous pleasure. Thank you all for attending. Um, I think you're going to be in uh, for a really, really uh, storytelling treat. But I would like to introduce you all our speaker. Our speaker. She is the legendary Miss <laughs> Betty May Fikes, also known as the voice of Selma. She is, I'm going to tell you, I have met her now for a few weeks and, and actually it was a month. And she is a powerful songster. Um, a musical genius. I'm going to, she is like the most beautiful storyteller I have ever met. And she will weave you into um, her impromptu lyrics. And I just, there is a chat that I would love for all of you to ask us questions. And at the end, we will have like 10 minutes probably to ask uh, questions uh, to Ms. Fikes. And there is also going to be a survey at the end. Please fill it out. It takes you like a few minutes and that let us know how we're doing and what would you like to see. And I think this is it for me. So I better be quiet and let the legendary Miss Fike uh, start. Take it away, Miss Fikes. <laughs> Thank you, my love. And that introduction is from someone that loves me, I tell you, about as much as I love her, even though we've only been together for a month. <laughs> Good afternoon. So glad to be with you today. They call me the storyteller. And somebody said one day, oh, Betty, you are such a great storyteller. I said, girl, that's the truth. What are you talking about? But I'm thankful to be with you today and thankful to share some of my stories, especially about music. I am a music lover and music has been embedded in my heart from a child to where I am today. I was raised around music. My mother was a gospel singer. My family members were singers, preachers, deacons, and good gospel singers. So all my life, I was around music and found the importance of music. But what was interesting to me was to feel the spirit of music. We have a lot of singers a lot of musicians, and with those being combined, it comes as one with everyone working together. And it comes up with such a beautiful sound. Amazing how words can transform into music and with the music can touch the hearts of people. Then I found out as a kid when they said, music can calm the wildest beast. I didn't understand that as a child, but in growing up, I watched. I always like to sit back and watch people. I watched the music in church. I watched the music in performance of just rehearsal in the spirit that took flight in it. So I want you to take this little storytelling trip with me for a few moments. And let me tell you not only about the music, but the spirit of the music. We have a lot of beautiful singers with a lot of beautiful voices all over the world, all nationalities, but do, do they all sing in the spirit, in the key of life? This is what I talk about all the time. The music in the key of life. From slavery time to where we are now, 
music has played a very important part in people's lives. Good times and hard times. Music has notes. When you're happy, the music is happy and the music makes you happy. And when you're sad, you find music that reflects on your sadness. For a long time, I didn't understand that. I just took on songs that I liked and that was good for me. But then I started watching people in church, more so in clubs in my surroundings. And I would see gospel songs where the spirit would be so high in church, people would shout. And I wanted to understand that. So I traveled with that from a child to a teenager, watching and listening and learning. And some of the things I learned is that the importance of music, the importance of music was as a teenager, they sit and told stories of how it was for them in the days of struggle. And the only thing they had was their music. My great grandmother, 117 years old, the woman that raised me and the things that I'm doing today, I despise so much as a child because it related to me hard times and struggles and grievance. All those slow songs reminded me of funerals. And, and I used to say, is everybody crying? Why do we sing in such a grievance key? I did not understand then what I know now. When I would hear the old songs of old, come by here, Lord. Come by here, come by here, Lord. Come by here, come by here, Lord. Come by here, oh, Lord. Come by here. That's what my grandmama used to say. And boy, I used to say, my God, how can they do this when the fight and struggle is so hard and all they talk about is Jesus, Jesus. I didn't understand then. I didn't understand that music carried notes of joy I didn't understand that music carries the notes of peace. I didn't understand that music carried the note of sadness and harmony. But from an old grandmother, before she died, one birthday made her 113, the other made her 117. She died with all the teeth but one. Never went to the doctor, lived off herbs and would tell the stories. The old songs. Jesus keep me near the cross. There's a branch just fountain tree to all the healing streams flow from care mountain. That's what I used to have to hear all the time. And I was 
wanted something with pep. So you can imagine how it was for me to hear a band and the music. Because for me, it was a long time before in my church, we had a pianist to play for us. All I was saying was a cappella. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Where am I? Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Where am I? Well, I like that one because we could clap our hands and move. So I went through childhood and my teenage years with the old songs and the songs of my ancestors. I didn't know or understand then that my grandmother was trying to pass the history on to me. I didn't want to sing, I was made to sing. As a child, age of four, my mother was singing with the SB gospel singers. And I would stand next to her as she would lead off this old song, Stand By Me. And it went, when the storms of life are raging, Stand by me. I was standing there looking up. My mother was tall with her singing that. And sometimes she was singing with tears rolling down her eyes. And I didn't understand the words. So that's why I didn't like a lot of the old slavery songs because it always brought tears to people's eyes. And I didn't understand that because I always related tears to sadness and weakness. But once you get, uh, when the world is tossing me like a chip out on the sea, thou who knows all about us, stand by me. And that little girl whose name Betty May would say, Whoa, stand by me. Oh, Lord, they want you stand by me. That was my humble beginning. Oh, Lord, stand by me. From that time and traveling through the South with all those old gospel songs, going from place to place, didn't understand that we were in a struggle, didn't even understand that we were integrated cities, an integrated state. I thought that's the way things were and was supposed to be. I didn't know. I didn't know. But for 10 years, I was with my mother and traveled with my mother. We moved from Selma to Detroit. And she died there. I had to take the trip from Detroit to Selma on the train, sitting in the last coach. When the conductor would come through, open the door, I could look back and see the casket of my mother. We stopped in New Orleans, where a social worker got me off the train and kept me in her beautiful home overnight took very good care of me, carried me back to the train station the next day, put me on the train with my lunch, and we rode it back 
to Alabama, where they picked my mother's body up in Montgomery. My father and I sat inside of the trailerway bus station where he played the song over and over again. I'm sitting there with this little blue dress on a little Shirley Temple curls looking up at him and he's playing the song over and over again, looking back over my life. And if I just had the chance, I would never make the same mistake again. He played that over and over and over, over and over and over again. So these are the things that made me really watch people and music. I didn't understand when they see a grown man cry. They used to say men weren't supposed to cry because of their strength. As a kid, that's what they would say. But I've seen older men cry just by hearing music. And I was sitting wondering, what's going through their minds? What would make a man cry like that? So watching my father that particular day at 11 and not understanding, I found out when I was grown. Looking back over my life, and if I just had the chance, I would never make that same mistake again. And the one verse I can remember, he said, once my life had overturned and I had nothing to gain. But he said in the end that my dad put his head down and just shaking and said, but oh, what a lesson I have learned. And if I just had the chance, I would never, never make that same mistake again. Now, my mother was a gospel singer. So I got all the gospel from my mama. And I was surrounded by great gospel singers, Mahalia Jackson, Cleopas. Robertson, all these people used to come to Selma. And the reason why I was so captivated, today they're legends to you. Mahalia Jackson would come through in her Cadillacs once a year, special on anniversaries. I don't think those times would ever take place again. Out in the rural areas, churches would come together. And you can hear singing, Lord, for miles and miles and miles and miles around. And after service, there was a feast. And in the feast, stories were being told. Mahalia would tell the stories of traveling to and fro and how she was treated and the songs they were singing. Oh, I just wish you could have been there to hear these stories and not only hear these stories, but to hear the songs without music, but it sounded like music was there. Walk with me, Lord, walk with me. Walk with me, Lord, walk with me. They had a song for every story, from slavery time to where they were. And a lot of that has disappeared today. That's why I continue to do what I do today because someone did it for me. No one know some of the stories that Mahalia Jackson told. No one knows some of the story Cleophas Robinson told, and this man's voice would, I mean, it, he would make your heart flutter when he was singing. This is what brought me into this thing you call music. The spirit of it. In church, they would sing, shine on me. Lord, shine on me. 
of Jesus say come on to me and rest lie down I weary one lie down I head up on my breast shine oh no music but the spirit that filled the place was so high well then I didn't understand where the spirit come from then some older lady told me one day, Mama Liza, she said, well, Betty, you, 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 you haven't experienced anything yet, baby. You got to experience something. And then when I got older, I think they was to tell me, you haven't paid your dues yet. You got to pay your dues. You just can't live from day to day. You got to pay your dues. Well, I didn't know suffering was paying dues. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know going through something was paying dues. I thought all that had been told me about my ancestors and the one before me had paid their dues for me. I didn't know that it was going to be just as hard for me as it was for the ones who came on before me. That's why I do what I do today. This is why I tell the stories today, especially to the younger generation. And I say to you today, you haven't been through anything yet. Before the Freedom Riders and the movement came along, and even though it's been here for a very long time, people have been fighting for the right to be free 1500, 1600, 1700s, 1800s. Stories have been told. Here we are now, 21st century. Who would have believed that I would still be singing, Oh, freedom? I ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Who would believe that I'd be telling this generation about the old struggles and the old songs and where we come from? But I do this to let you know that we all standing on the shoulders of so many. We all got a burden to bear and we all have a cross to carry. I didn't understand this thing about Jesus. I thought that was all about running to church every Sunday. I couldn't understand why everybody believed in Jesus, but when nobody living well. Why are these people over here living good? And you love the Lord, as you say. I love the Lord. He heard my cry, pitied every moan. Why? Why? Is he letting these things happen to you? I couldn't understand that as a child. But then, when the movement came to Selma and all these brilliant minded young men and young women came to Selma, teaching us more, telling us more, and brought me into my existence. I didn't even know where I was going, especially now, an only child. Mother had died. I had already been through three homes. And behind every home, there's a story. So tell me, why do you think that music is so important in my life? Well, I, I learned that when I'm feeling good, I can sing, your love, your love. 
It's a supernatural thing. Hey, baby. <laughs> your love, your love. And life is supernatural. So I'm going to give you some examples of my experience of music that brought me uh, to the place I am today. My grandmother used to worry about it. Everybody's worrying about that atom bomb. No one seems to worry about the day my Lord shall come. You better get your house in order because he may be coming soon and he's going to hit like an atom bomb when he comes. But honey, we had the best food. Mm the best collaboration of love. If we didn't have nothing else, we had a community of love. A lot of which is lost today. But in church you would hear praise, just Lord. Take, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn through the storm, Lord. Through the night, lead me on to the light. Take, take my hand, precious Lord, and lead. Lead me on. Now the old Baptist church out in the rural area, when you would hear songs like that, girl, yeah, the leaves on the trees would start trembling. Because one mother would lead us lead out, they call them a shout out, and then another sister across the room would take over, and then they would go to moans. We don't have that today. We have praise and worship today, and there's nothing wrong with praise and worship. I love that too, but I like the old songs, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain Free to all the hills and streams and flow from Calvary Mountain. We don't get those too much anymore. Oh, how sweet it is to walk in this beautiful light. Come all around me, suffering day and night. So my young generation of people today, I always say, what will your story be? Say, so where were you in a time when, and it don't have to be a time. I used to say, let's go back to the 60s. I say to you today, let's go back to January 5th and 6th of this year. All the things that we've been fighting for for over 60 years. Let's view. 20 and 21, especially the fifth and sixth of 21. I'm still crying over that day. What will my story be for the 6th of January? Lost my brother, Congressman John Lewis. We fought for the right to vote 60 years ago. And here it is, they've been threading it piece by piece till they've nearly torn it down. So for the 5th of January, 
I was singing high praise. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Then look on the six. Look what happened on the six. Now common sense would tell you that if that had been Black Lives Matter, they wouldn't have even been able to get to the Capitol, less known get into the Capitol. So that lets you know we still got a lot to fight for. Our country now is so divided. Where is the music? Who's singing for us now? Who's standing up for us now? So in these times, the only thing when you come, for me, it's only the music. I look at all these movements of people. Where is the music? Where is the spirit? We don't even have the spirit of the movement. We were taught as teenagers to get a good education because once you get a good education, that's the only thing that man can't take away from you. But an educated person without anything but a good education is bad news. You need all three, like the Trinity for growth mind, body, and spirit. I always say spirit, mind, and body. If the three are not connected, yes, you will survive, but will you be happy? Will you be have joy? This peace. We got a lot, I, you know, even in traveling, when I pass beautiful homes, my first thought, how many people up in there are happy? You know, happiness brings on you know, when your circumstances are good and you're doing good, you're happy. But happiness don't bring joy. Joy comes from the inside. That's where the music comes from. Then you can understand whether you're singing or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what the moan's about. Most people don't even know about the moans. We... And Smithsonian used to travel, going to old Baptist churches to find churches that did the moan. There's a man over the river giving sight to the blind. And the background will go, mm -hmm. there's a man over the river giving sight. To the blind. <laughs> then you hear the moan from someone else across the church. Another mother will say, If you are a soldier, you ought to pray sometime. We don't have days like that anymore. We don't have the Marvin Gaye's, the B.B. King's, and I came up with the Howling Wolf and Clyde McFarlane. and my aunt had a beauty shop downtown, so I didn't have to go through the back doors and stuff. I don't know where all this collaboration comes up for the South, but we had our own restaurants, beauty shops, and my aunt beauty shop was in the heart of downtown Selma. And I could get on the fire escapes and sit because the Elks Club was upstairs. The beauty shop was downstairs. So when all these famous men came to town, they would be at the Elks Club rehearsing early that Saturday. And I could sit on the fire escape steps and hear the music. Rock me, baby, rock me all night long. Bye, no, no. Girl, y'all don't know what you was missing. Rock me, baby, rock me all night long. 
I want you to rock me like my back ain't got no more. Now, when I used to hear that sound, I've always been about words. What is he saying? So now, not only is about the words, now as a teenager, I'm beginning to see the liberation from the gospel to the blues. Because here was B.B. King coming through and Lord Bobby Blue Blade was my man singing Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y. Then B.B. King was saying, now here's three o'clock in the morning, babe. Now I had, had seen a lot of men go through changes over oh, that song, B.B. King, three o'clock in the morning. It was saying, I heard the rooster crow for day. I looked out my window <laughs> and saw my baby walk away. Now you can hear that music back like there. The bum, bum, down, the down, 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 down. Down on, I know he heard me calling, down on. <laughs> he looked back and waved his hand. We don't get that anymore. My specialty was like, I don't know why I was so wrapped up in the men was being blues artists. I guess it was because of the depths. I, I just don't know. But Bobby Bland, chain of love, tie my heart to you. I would hear things like that, those words. Chain of love made me feel so blue. Now I'm just your prisoner. Now tell me. What are you going to do? Now, what kind of expression do one have when you're listening to this? It was the music that would pull you in and the words. And later, when I really got in tune, well, I guess I was so in tune with men because my daddy was a gigolo. So in the summertime, every weekend, there was fish fries. You have big fish fries outside and people would come and gather. You could hear blues from miles around. So that's why I tell people that my mother was a gospel singer. She gave me the gospel. My daddy was a gigolo and he gave me the blues. But honey, when I hear the blues, I always think of it in a way that it moves me. The, the spirit of the music moves me. The words of the song move me. I don't know why I love you like I do. I don't know why I need you like I do. And I'll be wanting to know what is it that's in that person to make them feel that way and to give that type of energy out. But then you have to be going through something to receive it. So gospel is a great expression of God's love. They used to sing, there, there are some things I may not know. There are some places I cannot go. But I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, for I can feel him and my soul. And my grandmother used to tell me that, and I, I just couldn't understand. I, I, you know, I tried to understand then. I understand now, but I definitely did not understand it then. 
that it is a power that comes from within. That it comes a time in life that sometimes things will become so unbearable that you can't do nothing but moan. It comes a time in life that when you don't have nowhere to turn or, or who to turn to, that you must have a song in your heart. I, I sing the song, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. Nobody knows the trouble I have seen. Glory and That's when they say, is that proper? No, but I could tell you what is proper that keeps me doing what I'm doing. When you have been around things and people and seeing things happen, seeing history being made, and you're part of that. You're around people that to you 60 years ago, they were just Uncle Martin, Mr. Malcolm, Stokely Carmichael, Julian Bond. 60 years later, they're legends, but they still love you. Does it make it any different? Because there was just a young man trying to correct a wrong 60 years ago. 60 years later, they have arrived. Some people, when they arrive, turn their backs on you. Some reach out and keep reaching out. I am a reacher. My heart is full of love. Even though I get upset highly sometimes, but I still keep love in my heart. I still keep a song in my heart, precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul in the stillness of the midnight, precious secret. And Lord, sacred secrets to unfold. I used to hear people say, I don't know why. I have to cry sometimes. I don't know why, Lord. I have to sigh sometimes. That's going to be a perfect day and trouble get out of my way i don't know why but i find out by and by and i constantly keep saying oh if i could just pull us recordings of how we used to pray in prayer me no music Nothing but voices. And today, I look at back on where I come from. And I always say, yesterday, speaking to today. This is my story. And I always ask, what will your story be? Will you fill your heart with love? Mine was, I used to leave R.B. Hudson High School. We had folk and civil rights, which became human rights. And walking from school, I used to go by a little cafe called the Savoys, and where we go and play the music. And they had a song I would play over and over again. And when I didn't have the money, I would go in 
And Mr. Chessman would just go to the rock hole and say, here you go, go play it. The love of my man. Boom, 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 boom. Keeps me safe and warm. The love of my man protects me from all. Cause I know that he loves me and I love him. Miss Betty, we have a few more minutes before uh, Q&A. Just wanted to let you know. Okay. All right. Well, my day has been short and merry, but I'm known in Selma for singing in church. Oh, wow. Clubs and mass meetings. Yeah. Don't know how I got the voice of Selma. But mind you, in the civil rights movement, the Els Club was across the street from the jailhouse. So when I'm going up on Saturday night to sing at the Els Club, all the fellas that was in jail would start hollering, Betty, Betty, sing Dr. Feel Good. I don't want nobody always. Hang around me and my man. No, no, no. We don't have days like that anymore. Why? Because our normal is over. We are in a new world order now. I say to you today, have a story in your heart and have a song in your heart. Life don't always treat you kind. But in the days that is not so kind, keep a song, keep a good spirit. The days will come that I'm looking now, the days that we once knew are, are no more. And as you can see, everyone has passed away and we're telling now new stories. And I leave with you today. What will your story be? The day have passed. And it will all be over after a while. So live life to its fullest. Enjoy life. And choose joy. Choose joy and choose to be a helper. And most of all, be a builder. We laid the foundation 60 years ago for you to build today. So my thoughts are with you. I would say I'm passing my torch. I can only give mine up in death, but I will ask each of you to keep singing, keep loving, and keep marching. And get in, as my brothers say, let's get in some good trouble. There's trouble all around us. Let's get in some good trouble and sing our way through it. God bless you and keep you. It's Betty, I'm applauding for everybody, okay? <laughs> That was so emotional and thank you for your passion and walking us through history. Um, and we have a few questions. So mm -hmm. again, ask, have you been able to perform much during the pandemic? No, I have even done, I have even been, and it's so strange, it's hard for me because I don't get the same feel virtual as I would doing it live. So this is very hard. That's why I love you. So you're about the best that I have had. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I had even done a memorial virtuals. That was hard. Mm -hmm. So 
No, I haven't done any. The last open uh, thing I've done was at my brother's funeral, Con Congressman Lewis. That was the last time I sung in public. Um, another question is, what, um, how, what do you attribute your grandma's long, long life? Oh, you wow. What? Listen. Y'all should have known her. <laughs> Grandmama say, you, you just tell me, girl, you can't be straddled the fence. You either going to be a pig or you're going to be a cow. You can't sing the blues and you can't sing the gospel. Wow. Her longevity, she lived off herbs. She drank a bowl of coffee every morning, a big bowl of coffee. Never ask for help. She wouldn't even let you help her up the steps. If you try to catch your bow arm, I got it. I don't need no help. But her longevity and her energy, that was the thing that, that brought me to God because that's all she believed in. Someone that only didn't really go to school, but she could read the Bible. And I am where I am today because of her. Because everything I tried to get away from, that's what I'm doing today. And her longevity was about love. She was the maestro of the family. Whatever Sarah Craig said, that's what went. Mm -hmm. So in her last days, she wasn't even sick. She just said, I'm tired and I'm ready to go home and stop eating and went home. What a blessing. Well, well uh, some of the comments is we appreciate you performing for us today, even if it was virtual. <laughs> uh, I think most of us or all of us are very honored. Uh, to me personally, I'm going to say that I will never forget this moment to have met you. Uh, you have brought so much light and life thank you thank you <laughs> to us um i don't know if anybody let me see um another comment from michelle is thank you for taking the time to bring your life to us oh <laughs> oh thank you and um i have another question is how did you meet uh, Congressman John Lewis. Oh. John, and you know, I have to catch myself because everybody call him Congressman, but I I met John when I was 15 years old. Came to my hometown, Selma. We worked together in Selma. Uh, working with King, as uh, King would call him, the boy from Troy. But through the years, I just realized this week that I have traveled with him every year for over 20 years. But this man impacted my life. So see, my family became the movement family. My mother was already dead. And by the time the movement hit in Selma, I was already like Mario Angelo. I had, I had Broken wings, broken wings that I couldn't speak. I didn't let nobody on the inside. And John was one of the people that became my big brother. John Lewis and Julian Bunn, Silas Norman. Bring tears to my eyes today because I wonder often what my life would have been like if it had not been for these men in the movement. Well, another comment is by Thalia, very inspirational. Thank you for the gift of your life and your voice. Oh, thank you. I wish I could sing today. Next time somebody be there to play piano for me so we can have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> there will be another time. So. Okay. <laughs> Another comment, uh, comment coming in from Charles is, I have appreciated your message so much. Thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you. 
They say, if I can help somebody know some, then my living shall not be in vain. And I tell everyone that music is my testimony. And my all the trials that I have been through will become my testimony. So the company one that I work with, my agency is my title there is healing hearts. We're touching hearts while healing minds. Sometimes we keep so much closed up in. The only thing that saved me was the singing because I couldn't talk, but I could sing. And I never looked at myself as a good singer. Someone told me that's what saved me is that I never put myself on pedestals, but the singing, when I'm hurt, I can sing until it's over when I, I don't hold in the grudges. So that's, that's what I, uh, music has so many expressions. And that's what I like to give to my audience that expression, and it's only expression of love. Um, well, on behalf of Multicultural Affairs, we are putting you on a pedestal okay. <laughs> <laughs> at Eastern. Um, I just want to remind everybody also that uh, there is a survey after this presentation, please fill it out. Um, this will be the last event for Black History Month. In, in March, we're going to start with Women's History Month. And on March 2nd, we have uh, Dr. Goal, who will give a presentation on her native country. Ah. And well, there's a few more comments in so before we leave. I am oh, going okay. So from right. I am so grateful to be a part of this event. You, Miss Fikes, have real joy in your voice calming love in your face. Your message is clear to the next generation. We Thank must you. know and appreciate all those who made our pathway smoother. Miss Annabelle, thank you for being who you are. Thank um, you. <laughs> and from Rukutsu, this was powerful. Who knew music was a form of comfort, communication and courage. That was very wonderful. Thank you. Mm. So, um, oh, wow. Thank <laughs> you. So we're all going to tell you, um, have a great afternoon and evening. And I can't wait to keep connecting with you. Okay. Darling, I say no matter high, high or low, your music notes go. Stay in tune. With God, he'll carry you through this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I love you, girl. Bye, everybody. Have and a thanks everyone who tuned in. God bless. Bye. And keep a song in your heart. <laughs> Thank you. Best advice. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>